10 o'clock. Uh, this is the second hour of today on ENCA. I'm Yuveka Rangapa. Heavy hearts this morning here at ENCA and in the media industry. The death of our colleague and friend Karima Brown has left us all in shock, to say the least. Karima passed away after battling COVID for several weeks now. She was loved and feared, too, for her unwavering pursuit of truth and justice in South Africa. She was passionate about politics and certainly leaves a legacy of fearlessness and brave journalism. Rest in peace, Karima. Our condolences to Karima's family and friends as well. And we will, of course, be reflecting on her life and her work here on ENCA throughout the day. But for now, here are your headlines. Political analyst and ENC host of The Fix, Karima Brown, dies from COVID-19. Former State Security Minister Bongani Bongo is back in court on charges of corruption. And New York Governor Andrew Cuomo is facing increasing pressure to resign over a growing sexual harassment scandal. Well, the news coming in this morning, journalist and broadcaster Karima Brown has died from COVID-19. You remember she anchored our weekly show, The Fix, and was a regular political analyst on our channel. Well, let's chat about Karima's life and times with our managing editor and friend, uh, John Bailey. John, uh, a difficult morning for us here at ENCA. I think we're all quite choked up this morning. Just tell us about hearing the news this morning. Yeah, and it's, it's a very sad occasion for us, um, Yubeka, um, that Karima has, in, I can confirm that Karima Brown has passed away this morning, in the early hours of this morning. She has been battling with these uh, COVID-related complications uh, that she picked up, um, but we, we, we've been hoping that mm. over the last few weeks that she will pull through. Um, and she's a, she's a strong woman, um, and she was not afraid to take on very difficult um, and sometimes controversial topics. And she was a, a good friend. We've known each other for more than 20 years. In fact, when I got into journalism, she was there already. She was a fierce fighter um, against sexism, against racism, uh, and never shied away from tackling people, uh, tackling issues, not, not only so much people, but she was the way she, she conducted herself was somebody who was very principled in yeah. what, she, what she did. And um, I must say I'm going to miss uh, receiving a whole bunch of SMSs from Karima on a weekly basis, talking about uh, injustices in the country, uh, urging one to say, look at these issues. Um, how, can we, how can we move forward to discuss certain, uh, certain topics? Um, and she was yeah, so you know, passionate. She was passionate. That's what I remember about uh, speaking to Karima, especially you know, when she came in to do analysis on things, John. Mm -hmm. she, was, uh, she was like, we have to ask this. We have to focus on this. And, and, and I think what was also so special about Karima is that she was so super highly intelligent and so tuned in to the politics and what was going on and where things were going wrong and where things needed to be fixed, hence the fix as well with Karima. That, but, but she managed to simplify, the, simplify it all for some of us who couldn't understand you know, what was happening with some stories as well. She, 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 you know, she, she didn't sort of look down on anyone or, or sort of you know, talk down to anybody when, when she did this. No, absolutely. She was uh, very committed. Uh, and that, uh, that passion that you're talking about, that flame just, I mean, well, the flame has died today, but it will live on for many, many years mm -hmm. because of she was a mentor for, for, for many people out there. Um, as I said, I mean, we know each other for more than 20 years. We had vigorous debates. We didn't always agree um, about certain topics and how things should be done, but that was, that was the nature of Karima. She was mm -hmm. always willing to engage, always willing to, to listen. Um, and willing to say, but okay, maybe she didn't understand the topic in this way. Mm. So I, I think I also just want to, uh, from ENCA, we want to send our condolences to the family, to her, uh, her brother, her two sisters, and her son, and the extended family as well. This is a tough time, and uh, we've been in constant contact with the family over the last few weeks. Um, and there were, there were signs that she's pulling through. Yeah. We, there was a lot of hope. Uh, but at the end, unfortunately, uh, she succumbed to these complications. And I think that's the thing, is that we would all known she'd been in hospital. Our viewers may not have known. Uh, many of us knew that she'd been in hospital for, for several weeks now. But 
we, we always we, we held on to that hope because Karim is a fighter. She's always been a fighter in everything. And I would just I imagine that the shock is still there. And it brings it home for us here, John. I mean, we report on deaths. We give the numbers every single day, every hour. We are reflecting the COVID numbers. And when we have it happen here in our home mm -hmm. as such, I think for us, it, it really, really, um, it, 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 it touches that nerve. It does. It does, uh, Iveka. But that's why I say I'm, I'm, ho I'm hopeful, right? The, her flame might have gone out today, yeah. but the legacy will live on. The legacy will live on at ENCA and also to the broader community uh, because we need to, we are in a, at a juncture in, our, in the development and the history of our country. Mm -hmm. And that's why it was important to have somebody like a Karima, a strong voice, a strong woman who stood up, who believed in, in the values that we want for this country, non-racialism, non-sexism, a democratic South Africa. And she, was, uh, she didn't back down. And yeah, I yeah. appreciated that of, of Karima. Uh, many, many didn't like her out there, uh, but that didn't stop her because it's like in, she was a principled uh, person and she, for that she will be, be dearly missed. But as I said, her legacy will live on for many years to come and for that I say thank you, Karima. Well, John, you spoke about missing those SMSs that you get, all the suggestions that you'd get from Karima or fighting for a certain story to be you know, treated in a, in a certain way. We also probably had your fair share of, uh, of complaints that came through, people who wanted her to be disciplined, people in authority, politicians who wanted her to be disciplined in a certain way for, for after interviews, I suppose, as well, for you know, portraying them in a certain way. And, you know, and I think it's always nice to talk about to talk about that because it, it proves just what a hard time she really, really gave people. Yeah, Most the, of them deserving of it, I must admit. Because she didn't back yeah. down, huh? Yeah. I mean, whoever it was in power, and for her it was, as I said, it was about the principle. It's like in, we have a democratic South Africa, we fought the apartheid system, we came through that, now there's a, a, an expectation that with our democratically elected leaders and the systems and the organizations that we have to protect our society, that they will do what they've been mandated to do. And that was, for Karima, the issue. You are there, you are representing our voice. Do what you are supposed to do. And she didn't back down. Yeah. She, we've had many, many people who uh, felt aggrieved by, by her approach, but it was, it was one to say, but why are we whispering? Let's, let's talk about these issues. Let's put it on the table and let's have a debate about these issues. Yeah. So she didn't back down. No, definitely. For, for nobody, she backed down. And I remember sort of uh, so interviewing Karima on, on shows and, you know, uh, analyzing stories as well. And you always got into trouble with the people in your ear because you always ran over when you were interviewing Karima because she always had so much to say. And it made so much sense that you actually couldn't get in there and, and cut her off and say, but Karima, we're out of time. It, you know, and, and I suppose a lot of our, our crew behind the scenes as well will, will not... You know, Karima, okay, that's a sound bite now. You've got to stop talking now. But that was, you know, those are fond memories we'll have. And I think we can carry with us on just the, the, the knowledge she had and the insight she could give and the way she could explain something to even, you know, those of us, like I say, who, who couldn't understand the politics of this all at, at times. You are close friends with the family, John. And, and have you had any conversations with them this morning? And, and, and do we know about arrangements, anything? It might still be early, but yeah. what do we know? Um, it's early days, uh, Yubeka. Um, but as you mentioned, I've been in very close contact with, with the family over the years. Uh, there's been many, many discussions, uh, and that's why for me, uh, even during the time when I uh, lived overseas in China, there was mm. always constant contact with, with, with Karima, with the family, to understand what, what's happening in South Africa, because she was so close to, to the action, so close to the ground. Uh, and it was always fascinating for me to get her, her take on what's happening in the country, what's the temperature, uh, where are we moving mm. as, as a country. Um, and uh, you, you were asking about what the arrangements are and in tune with uh, the Muslim tra traditions, um, uh, Karima, will, there will be a, um, a ceremony uh, today mm. Uh, mm. as, as okay. in, in keeping with the, the Muslim traditions and rituals. Okay, so she will be laid to rest today. Yeah. All right, John Bailey, thank you. I know it's a difficult morning, and thank you for sharing some of those thoughts. And I'm sure you have many, many more calls to field at the moment. But we'll continue uh, reflecting on the life and times of our dear friend Karima Brown. She was also a presenter on Talk Radio 702. We chat now to her producer, Clive Markey. Clive, uh, condolences to you as well this morning. You, you worked with Karima for a very long time, worked closely as well. Your first thoughts when you heard the news this morning? Oh, Yuveka, I mean, I was in total shock. I, 
I was at work. I'm at work um, working on the on 702's breakfast show. And when I got the news, it was just as we were about to end the show. And uh, the emotion was just overwhelming for me. Um, I was just speaking to uh, Karima's brother La, yesterday, mm-hmm. Zayn, and we were just talking about how um, we need to keep hope alive. And um, we were reflecting on the fact that the hardest thing about someone that's in this position is the fact that, you know, um, you feel helpless as a person who is close to her. Mm. I know that she would have done anything and everything to help me or help anyone else that is in that position. So as a person who loved her dearly, it really hurt us to, to find ourselves in a position where we just have to wait and wait for her to come back to us. Mm. And I was saying to someone um, this morning that it felt like I was just chatting to her the other day. I mean, we were just chatting on WhatsApp. Uh, a few weeks ago before she went into ICU. And I'm just in total shock at the moment. Mm-hmm. I really, really am just saddened. Mm. Well, uh, Clive, you know, many of, many of our viewers, many of our listeners only know the Karima they heard and they saw giving people a hard time. I think that's probably what we're going to hear most about Karima Brown is, is the hard time she gave people and, you know, her just being fearless and just being, you know, uh, sort of unwavering and so committed to, to getting to the truth and getting justice and, and really being fed up sometimes with the politics here. But producers know often the other side of someone and Let's just uh, talk about your experience with, with, with Karima, the person, the person behind the scenes, the person behind them, when the mic was switched off. Oh, she was a lovely person. I mean, I, I, when I first met her, I was quite intimidated by her. Mm, and mm. I thought, wow, this lady, you know, very powerful, very passionate. I think the one thing that came across for me was just her passion and her dedication to her work. I mean, she would come in hours before her show starts just to prepare. If we were going to speak to someone about a book that that they had written, Karima would have read the book literally the day before and and spent the whole night reading. I think her love as well for her family and just Mm. her friends as well is just endearing. And the one thing that I also remember about her is that she was a well-rounded person. Her passion was not just about politics. It, it, it extended to social justice. Mm-hmm. It extended to young people and the rights of the, of, 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 of the marginalized communities. She was a big advocate of the LGBTIQ plus community, the queer community. And every often on our show, the Karima Brown show on 702, we made an effort to make it an inclusive show. And she was always wanting to 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 spread that message you know and um yeah she is a fighter but also she's she's a person who likes to have fun as well i mean yeah. during our downtime when we were we'd be in flights to cape town covering the state of the nation address there'd be instances where we're laughing and joking around and clowning around so and also just she's always on 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 her phone so when when john was saying that uh, we'd be kept awake sometimes with her messages she'd be saying clive did you see this mm, oh and mm, then we mm. get into a conversation about it and and she was just just so passionate. And I, I, I want to say to, to people that didn't know that side of her, that um, her work was just not work for her. Yeah. It was really her life. And when she dedicated a, a, a time to a story, she really wanted to, to get people and hold people accountable. And sometimes I was also scared. She'd be like, Clive, let's call. We need to have them account. Yeah. And I'm like, ooh, Karima, okay. So then I would call. But I, as a young person coming into this industry, she really just took me in. She grew mm. me. And our relationship grew. I mean, but- she was, I was her manager. We've worked on so many things together outside of, of the work that we did on radio and television. And I think, Clive, not just as a young person, she taught many of us who've been around, who've been around in this industry for a long time. She taught many of us a different way of looking at things, a different way of questioning things as well. And, and, and you speak of her being so well-rounded, and I'm reminded of a conversation we had early one morning when I was doing the morning show here on ENCA, and I was out at State Capture doing crossings from there to Dan Moyane in studio, and uh, uh, Karima was my guest. She was my anchor friend there at the time. And, and we had a conversation, and we spoke about State Capture off-camera b- before we actually went on, and then we started talking about menopause and hot flushes, and we started talking about running yes. and she gave me advice on running because I wanted to start running at the time and, and that was Karima, she could go talking about the injustice and talk about the politics and really deep stuff and the next thing we're talking about but Yuveka, how do I deal with hot flushes, you know what's going on and I think, you know, this is menopause and whatever and I'm really battling so that was the Karima that, you know, that, that, that she, was just, she was just all of those things in one 
She was. I'm, I'm literally getting goosebumps as you as you saying that, Rebecca, because those are the types of things that that we used to talk about. We used to talk about so many different things, and some of the things you'd think, "How, Karima, you know this?" You know? <laughs> she really yeah. was in tune with with what's happening in the country, in the world, but also just her love for her son was just amazing. I mean, she and Mikhail mm, were like mm. best friends, you know. And and the first thing and the first person I thought of really when I heard the news was Mikhail and I just want to say to the family I mean I want to send my condolences to the family but I really want to say that I will remember her for the fun times we used mm. to have for the downtime we used to have and just um, the, the 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 impact that she has made to not only us but to a lot of other young people old people and alike and um, just her passion and dedication mm. is something that I will always remember and just also just her work ethic yeah. Rebecca she used to you know get to work on time um, when we had things that we were doing outside, she was always just professional, making sure that she's never late and so forth. So she really just took took um, um, things very seriously, but also just enjoyed life. I mean, she mm. was a lover mm. of life, um, from running to doing all sorts of things. All right, Clive, thank you very much for, for sharing those, uh, those uh, memories of uh, our dear Karima Brown with us and uh, strength through the day, I suppose. And like you say, as condolences to her family uh, as well. It's quite a shock this morning. Well, let's